Hello, welcome to lecture 28 of the course. This is lecture 7 of module 3. In this lecture, we will discuss the classical counterpart of Langevin noise, that is quantum Langevin noise. And finally, we will begin our discussion on the effect of quantum noise on an optical mode in a Fabry-Perot cavity as Fabry-Perot cavity is the backbone of a cavity optomechanical system. So, let us begin. In the last class, we continued our discussion on modeling a realistic situation regarding the interaction of the system harmonic oscillator with the surrounding. The surrounding was modeled as a collection of independent harmonic oscillator and harmonic oscillator. Uh, each having different coupling coefficient or coupling constant and our analysis ultimately led to an equation of motion for the damped harmonic oscillator and uh, we got uh, a memory function defined as this quantity gamma of t and on the right hand side of the equation we get a parameter called xi of t and this is the so-called Langevin noise and this memory function was simplified defining a function called bath spectral density uh, denoted by the quantity j of omega and using this this memory function uh, can be written in this particular form and in fact uh, for many practical cases this uh, bath spectral parameter can be taken as mass into the mechanical damping gamma m into omega this is known as the ohmic damping so under ohmic damping this uh, memory function will take this form in fact uh, ohmic model results in a damping that does not depend on uh, the previous history of the bath it depends it does not depend on any earlier time and therefore uh, this process is known as the Markovian process and we obtain this uh, equations here now on the right hand side of this equation we have this Langevin noise and this is a signature of the uh, therm this is actually also called thermal force and uh, this clearly shows that uh, unlike the other case when it is zero uh, in that case transfer of energy can take place from the harmonic oscillator system harmonic oscillator to the surrounding but not from the surrounding to the uh, system oscillator so here presence of this Langevin noise says that both uh, process is possible that means transfer of energy from the system oscillator to the surrounding and back from the surrounding to the system oscillator and thereby the system will come into a thermal equilibrium then we went on to calculate the bath correlation function uh, and this xi of t as it is the Langevin noise so we uh, and it is related to the bath and we uh, try to calculate the first moment that is average of the Langevin noise and its autocorrelation function that is the second moment so here what we assume that the system bath coupling is weak and then this Langevin noise expression uh, be become a little bit simplified and our calculation led us to the fact that necessarily the expected or uh, the average value of the Langevin noise is zero and the bath correlation function we calculated and in the process we learned how to calculate the average value of various quantities and uh, it turns out that the uh, this second moment uh, or the autocorrelation function for the Langevin noise is a expression like this and it physically it says that is interaction of the bath with the system oscillator via the Langevin noise is correlated only to itself and not to any other interaction and also the strength of the fluctuation varies directly with the mechanical damping parameter gamma m which is again related to the so-called fluctuation dissipation theorem and we went to uh, recall the winner kinsin theorem uh, which we discussed in the context of movable mirror in an earlier class uh, which basically says that the noise spectrum is a 
is uh, nothing but the Fourier uh, transform of the correlator and in analogy to this we have uh, written down the noise spectrum for the uh, but and which is known as the spectral noise density and that is the Fourier transform of the second moment of the Langevin noise uh, and uh, we worked out that this uh, for ohmic damping this turns out to be a very simple expression and it is independent of the frequency for ohmic damping and that's the reason that uh, in the case of ohmic damping the Langevin noise is said to represent the so-called white noise and this Langevin noise uh, can be expressed in the frequency domain also just by taking the Fourier transformation then we are uh, this started discussing the quantum regime to discuss quantum regime we now have to calculate the expectation value of various parameters so we uh, and because we are considering a collection of an independent harmonic oscillator at some temperature t so we uh, written down the density operator uh, for the system and uh, that will be required because we know that when we take the average of any uh, quantum optomechanical operator expectation value is given by the trace of the rho density operator into the operator so this has to be calculated so we uh, worked out the thermal uh, density operator uh, for these thermal oscillators in the thermal state and uh, we calculated the average phonon number because these are thermal mechanical we are modeling it as an oscillator and having uh, in the thermal environment we term it uh, the quanta is termed as phonon there and we use the symbol b to represent this uh, phononic oscillator and we calculated the average value of phonon number which is the usual this is the familiar expression we obtain and then we uh, tried to calculate the position position correlation for an ensemble of n harmonic oscillators and we finally obtain this uh, particular expression now we are going to build up our next analysis from here only thing let me uh, remind you that you should understand this the notation here this bracketed nk represents this one so it's a collection of all n1 n2 up to n capital n number of items we have there and this kate represents the uh, product direct product of various uh, uh, number state uh, corresponding to the oscillators let us now write the position operators this q i q z these are operators let me write q i is equal to i am not using the sim uh, this operator sign but you please understand that i am now talking about operator because now we are in the quantum regime so q i is equal to uh, q i 0 plus b i plus b i dagger this is uh, the position operator for the i -th oscillator and here q i 0 is equal to this is the zero point fluctuation this is h cross divided by twice m i omega i m i is the mass of the oscillator i -th oscillator and omega i is the corresponding uh, resonance frequency now by the way please recall that we have utilized uh, similar thing earlier when we have this displacement operator x in this we wrote earlier in the context of when we discuss about uh, harmonic oscillator uh, this is x zero point fluctuation and we, there we used a plus a dagger now x zero point this fluctuation was defined as h cross divided by twice m omega the same thing here we are doing it and we can then also write for qz for qz we have qz zero for the zth oscillator bz plus bz dagger and here qz zero is equal to h cross divided by twice mz omega z all right now we have to calculate um, 
this particular quantity so let us do that first of all let us calculate this bracketed bra of these number states qi qz and this kate basically we are calculating the scalar product uh, for this operators product of these operators qi qz now if i put qi qz i have qi zero qz zero and uh, this is actually i can write it as n1 n2 these are the direct products up to n n in certain notation qy qz if i break it up so i will get four terms so do, those would be bi dagger bz plus bi bz dagger plus bi dagger bz dagger and we'll have bi bz and then on the other side you will have n1 n2 up to capital n number of oscillators so we'll have the corresponding quantity for that and you will see that the contribution from these two terms this term as well as this term is obviously going to be zero just recall uh, to understand it we can calculate say n b b or n b dagger b daggers you can do that also then here you will see you will get it as your simple calculation will give you it as n minus 1 into n minus 2 all right and you will have here n n minus 2 and these are orthogonal so this would be zero so these two contribution would not be there because of these two terms so i will uh, simply have qi0 qz0 n1 n2 say ni nn and here you will have bi dagger bz plus bi bz dagger and the other side you will have say n1 n2 let me take it uh, so this anyway you have understood uh, this one let us say i have nz up to nn okay so now let us proceed uh, further so let me uh, calculate it term by term so i have qi0 qz0 i have here n1 n2 okay so here this let me first consider this particular term so bi dagger bz so bi dagger when it uh, this operator operates on the bra ni here it will it will operate on only the ni oscillator i -th oscillator so it would become because it is bi dagger operating on this this would become you know ni minus one and then you will have up to nn and this will give you square root of ni similarly when bj operates on nj you know you will get nj square root of nj and here you will have n1 n2 and so on up to say it will nj would become nj minus 1 and you'll have nn so this is what you will get from the first term now let us consider this term and in the similar way here you will see that this would become n1 n2 and this i operator bi annihilation operator when it operate on this uh, you will get this is you will get it as ni would become ni plus one and you will have n n here and this would become square root of ni plus one similarly now bj when it operates on nj it would become square root of nj plus one and in this side you will have n1 n2 and you will have it as nj plus one and n n okay so therefore i can write the whole thing as qi zero qz zero square root of ni nj 
plus square root of n j uh, n i plus one sorry you will have n i plus one and n j plus one and then i will write it as delta i j because all the other terms will not contribute as you see uh, this one for example n i minus one and n j minus one they would become orthonormal uh, it will get normalized provided i is equal to j if i is not equal to j then they will vanish because uh, scalar product with n1 because this is just a number n1 and n1 will give you 1 n2 and n2 will give you 1 scalar product but n i minus 1 and n j minus 1 will give you 1 provided i is equal to j okay similar is, is the logic for this particular uh, second term also so therefore we will end up with this particular expression so therefore we have evaluated let me uh, write it uh, again here uh, what we got is we have evaluated this particular quantity and we have qi qz scalar product uh, we have worked out and this is we got qi 0 qz 0 square root of n i n z plus square root of n i plus 1 into n z plus 1 delta i z okay now let us proceed further we have ultimately we have to work out the expectation value of this product of these two operators and this is equal to we have summation so let me show you the expression once again here so this we have to have let me write here again we have summation over all these n case and this is product and p n k q i 0 q j 0 this already we worked out so just let me copy from here this uh, same term we are having here let me put it okay all right let me do it uh, do it let me write here so qi 0 qj 0 plus square root of n i n j plus square root of n i plus 1 n j plus 1 and delta i j okay now let us do one thing let us look at uh, separate the terms where k is not equal to i so we'll separate it terms like this say when nk is not equal to ni and that means k is not equal to i here i have p n k this term and concentrate only the ni terms here and when n k is equal to n i so we have here p n i okay and i have q i 0 q j 0 and this term already i have n i square root of n i n j plus square root of n i plus 1 n j plus 1 delta i j this mathematics may look little bit cumbersome but it's actually not that difficult but you will get a very useful result and it is important to know how to do these calculations now you see this particular term will give you simply one because uh, the probabilities for example any corresponding probabilities you have terms like this p1 summation p2 because of this product you will have all these probabilities would be equal to one right sorry this would be equal to uh, one this would be equal to one this would be equal to one so overall you will get from here you will it will be unity the whole thing and uh, therefore i will be left out with only this term so let me write here you will have summation n i p n i q i 0 q j 0 and square root of n i n j plus square root of this again let me write here nj plus 1 delta ij 
ओके फाइनली लेट मी नाउ सामिट ओवर ऑल द ऑसिलेटर्स फाइनली इफ आई सम अप दैट मीन्स इफ आई सम अप ओवर द वेरिएबल आई जे फॉर द ऑल द ऑसिलेटर्स एन ऑसिलेटर्स आई हैव क्यू आई क्यू जे सो दिस वुड बी आई कैन राइट इट एज आई जे एंड हियर आई हैव एन आई एंड it is uh this particular term okay let me put it here okay i have to write it again so i will have qi0 qz0 square root of ni nz plus this one nz and delta iz fine so this you can easily evaluate because of this kronecker delta i put i is equal to j then i will be left out with only one summation this is basically two summations are there now we are having one summation and then this summation over ni variables ni's and then qi0 square and i will have i think i uh, miss this uh, term here that is pni has to be also there so let me put it here so i have p n i or other let me write it uh, this way okay then i have this term p n i is also i have to write okay so i have here p n i now because i take i is equal to z i will have qi0 square then i have p n i so from here i will get n i and from here i will get n i plus 1 so this will give me 2 n i plus 1 this i can further write uh, as this i can write it as summation i qi0 square and this would be twice n of omega i i will explain how i get i am getting it so this is what i will have here this n of omega i is nothing but the average number of uh, photons or uh, phonons uh, uh, for the i th oscillator and that is n i p n i i think this you can recognize i have just utilized this one so this is the expression i get now therefore this is a very important result i obtain i z when i take the summation q i q z this is what i got this one i can further simplify because i know that n of omega i this already we worked out and this is equal to e to the power h cross omega i by k b t minus 1 and if you put it here and do the analysis you will get it as this quantity uh, position position correlation term would turn out to be very straightforwardly you can work it out i encourage you to do it otherwise maybe we can do it in the problem solving session it's a simple algebra you will get cot hyperbolic h cross omega i by twice k b t okay so this is what we obtain we will now discuss the quantum langevin noise in the similar line as we did for classical langevin noise now both the system and the bath oscillator variables are now quantized and they fo follow this commutation relation say qi pj this commutation is equal to i h cross delta i j the hamiltonian for the system and bath combined together is now written in this form so this is exactly the same as you will see except that now the position variable and the momentum variable are replaced by the corresponding operator so this is the system part we have p square by twice m that's the kinetic energy then i have this potential energy of the system oscillator m omega m square k 
क्यू कैप स्कोर अपारेटर्स देन दिस बार्डस आर कन्सिडार टू वि ए कलेक्शन अफ एन क्वान्टम हार्मनिक इंडिपेन्डेन्ट क्वान्टम हार्मनिक असिलेटर्स उथ करेसपन्डिंग ममेन्टम भेरिएबल से पी आई फर द आई एथ असिलेटर एम आई इज द मास अफ द आई एथ असिलेटर प्लस दिस पटेन्सियल एनार्जी टर्म हाफ एम आई अमेगा आई किऊ आई कैप स्कोर एंड देन द इंटरेक्शन विटुईन द सिसटेम एंड द बाट असिलेटर इज गिवेन बै दिस पार्टिकुलर टर्म दिस इज एक्जेक्टलि हाट उ रोड फर द क्लासिकल केस एज वेल एंड देन उ हेव दिस टर्म इज टेकन एडेड देयर टू टेक इन टू एकाउंट द कैंसल द इफेक्ट अफ शिफ्टिंग अफ द फ्रिकुवेन्सि अफ द सिसटेम असिलेटर सो यू उ हेव दिस टर्म सी आई टाइस एम आई ओमेगा आई स्कोर ओके now using heisenberg equation of motion we will again get uh, equation of this form uh, exactly the classical equation we get but now it will be in the operator form m q double dot plus m omega m square q plus m gamma m q dot that is equal to the langevin noise now this langevin noise term is then operator it is written in the operator form where this is same as in the classical case only it is the variables are now replaced by its operator so assuming that the coupling between the bath and the system to be weak then i can write this as this one qi cap cos omega i t plus P I K zero, M I omega I sine omega I t. Okay. Now it can be very easily uh, verified that this Langevin noise operator, quantum quantum Langevin noise operator, is Hermitian. So xi of t is equal to xi dagger of t, and also you can show. that because of the commutation you will see that xi of t xi of 0 is not equal to xi of 0 and product of xi of 0 xi of t now we can calculate the auto correlation function for the quantum langevin noise that is we have to calculate xi of t xi of 0 and this would be in the similar line as in the case of the classical case let me first write the whole uh, term i j i have here c i c j and we'll have q i of 0 q j of 0 the expectation value of the product then i have cos omega i t cos omega j t dash i will have four terms so let me write all of them and i will have expectation below all these are operators i am not writing the operator sign but you please understand that these are all operators so i have qi0 here pj of 0 here divided by uh, mj omega j cos omega i t sin omega j t dash and then i have Uh, plus pi zero, q z zero, divided by m i omega i, sine omega i, t, cos omega z t dash, and then plus pi of zero, p z of zero, divided by m i m z. omega i omega z sin omega i t sin omega z t dash all right so this is what i'll have now just a while back we have calculated this quantities say qi 0 these are operators again uh, we calculated qi 0 average 
expectation value of this product of this two operators that would be that we calculated as summation over ni p ni qi zero qz zero and we have it as square root of ni nj plus square root of ni plus one nj plus one delta ij okay and similarly you can show that you will get for this pi0 pj0 that would be equal to summation ni you have pni pi0 uh, pj0 and this is the same it is square root of ni nj plus square root of ni plus 1 nj plus 1 and you have delta ij however here uh, this pi0 similarly for pj0 that would be h cross mi omega i by 2 square root or pj0 is equal to h cross mj omega j by 2 square root now using these relations we can work out uh, the autocorrelation uh, for the Langevin noise quantum Langevin noise here because these are now operators quantum operators and if the calculations are done you will see that you will get it as summation i is equal to 1 to n h cross c i square divided by twice m i omega i and here you will have quad hyperbolic h cross the reduced Planck's constant h cross omega i divided by 2 kbt kb is the boltzmann's constant and here you have cos omega i t minus t dash minus i sine omega i t minus t this so this is what you will get again as like in the classical case we can define the so-called spectral density function j of omega and that is exactly in the similar way we have it is pi into summation over all the oscillators and i have ci square divided by twice m i omega i delta omega minus omega i now we can rewrite the autocorrelation function for the langevin noise in terms of the spectral density function as this xi of t xi of t this this would be equal to you can just put it and you will get it as h cross by pi zero to infinity you please look into the classical case once again and you will get it it will be h, uh, 0 to infinity d omega j omega quad hyperbolic uh, h cross omega by 2 kbt cos omega t minus t dash minus i sine omega t minus t dash all right so this is what we'll you will get now as in the classical case here also let us go for ohmic damping because we are interested in markovian process so for ohmic damping if we consider ohmic damping where this spectral density function is given as mass into gamma m omega we obtain the autocorrelation function expectation value of xi of t xi of t dash that would be equal to m into gamma m divided by pi uh, integration d omega h cross omega cot hyperbolic h cross omega by 2 kbt cos omega t minus t dash minus i sine omega t minus t dash okay 
now here this integration limit is from 0 to generally we write on infinity but to be precise it is there is a some cutoff frequency is there for ohmic damping that is omega c and it is generally taken in the limit say omega c tends to infinity now in the first approximation in the classical limit in the classical limit you know that in the classical case h cross tends to 0 and and temperature is non-zero t is non-zero and cot hyperbolic h cross omega by twice kbt this can be approximated to be as you can actually show it it would be 2 kbt divided by h cross omega and if we set omega c at infinity then you can very easily show that in the classical limit this Langevin uh, this autocorrelation function for the Langevin noise would be again we will uh, regain what we got in the classical case that is twice m gamma m kbt delta t minus t dash okay so this is what we will obtain and in fact we must get it now there is a actually another interesting form of this uh, uh, second moment of the Langevin noise quantum Langevin noise which you will often encounter in research literature and it's very easy to get it uh, what we uh, what is done there you just have to utilize these facts and you can uh, immediately rewrite it you know that minus infinity to plus infinity uh, omega cot hyperbolic h cross omega 2 kbt sin omega t minus t dash this integration is in the uh, frequency domain right so you have here d omega so this would be equal to 0 because uh, this overall this integral this would be odd function and another fact you can utilize is say minus infinity to plus infinity omega cos omega t minus t dash d omega is equal to zero if you utilize these two properties then this autocorrelation function for a quantum Langevin noise can be written in a slightly different form that would be this you will have m gamma m divided by 2 pi you see here the limit is from omega c will uh, you will put it as infinity then 0 to infinity we can replace it by a half of that's why this two term is coming here we had m gamma m by pi so i will have a uh, half term here because now i'm taking the limit from minus infinity to plus infinity so so that i can utilize these two properties there and what i will have is this you will have it as uh, it's very simple and straightforward you can verify it d omega h cross omega cot hyperbolic h cross omega by 2 kbt then rather than writing here you have this cos so i will write here e to the power minus i omega t minus t dash because the sign part will give me zero that's why i can do it and for the second term that means this particular term in the similar way i can utilize this particular property and then i can write it as minus infinity to plus infinity d omega h cross omega e to the power minus i omega t minus t dash and this is what i will get or in in short uh, I can write it this very useful expression which you will encounter in many many research uh, literature or research paper it would be simply h cross m gamma m uh, minus infinity to plus infinity d omega by 2 pi e to the power minus i omega t minus t dash omega cot hyperbolic 
एच क्रस ओमेगा बु के टी प्लस वन ओके आई एम जस्ट सीम्प्लीफाइंग दिस एक्सप्रेशन एंड दिस इज भेरि पपुलरलि एंड भेरि फ्रिकुवेंटलि यूज द सेकेंड अर्डर मुमेन्ट और दटो करेशन फांगशन फर द कन्टम लेंस एविन नईज यू कैन सी देट दट अटो करेशन फांगशन डिपेन्स ऑनलि ऑन द टाइम डिफारेस टाओ से टाइम डिफारेस लेट मी डिनोटेड बै टाओ देट इज टी टाओ इज इक्वल टू टी माइनास टी डेस एज यू कैन सी फ्रम दिस टर्म हियर सो बिकज इट डिपेन्स ऑन द टाइम डिफारेस ऑनलि दे फोर दिस कन्टम लेंस एविन नईज जाय अफ टी इज कल्ड स्टेशनेरि इज कल्ड स्टेशनेरि एंड दे फोर we can in fact write it in this form also this auto correlation function z of t z of 0 that would be equal to m h cross uh, gamma m integration minus infinity to plus infinity d omega by 2 pi e to the power minus i omega tau omega cot hyperbolic h cross omega by 2 kbt plus 1 okay now the fourier transform of this auto correlator gives us the so called spectral noise density in the quantum domain that would be as xi xi omega that is the fourier transform of the auto correlator so xi of tau xi of 0 and the fourier kernel say i omega tau we are evaluating it at for frequency say omega uh, greater than 0 and integrating over time integration limit is from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, we can quickly evaluate it it's very simple so let us do that we'll just put the expression that we have derived for this auto correlator that is m h cross gamma m integration minus infinity to plus infinity d tau and here i have minus infinity to plus infinity let me use the frequency variable say omega dash d omega dash by 2 pi e to the power i omega minus because now i have here this minus omega is here so i'm doing it replacing by omega dash okay so this is what i have then here i will have omega dash i will have cot hyperbolic h cross omega dash by 2 kbt plus 1 okay this can be further simplified because you can recognize that what i have here is this dirac delta function minus in delta function i will have if you look at it this expression i have a term like this integration d tau 1 by 2 pi e to the power minus i omega minus omega dash tau this is nothing but the dirac delta function delta omega minus omega dash so i can utilize it if i utilize it then i'll be able to write the whole thing as m h cross gamma m minus infinity to plus infinity you will have d omega dash delta omega minus omega dash omega dash i have here cot hyperbolic h cross omega dash divided by 2 kbt plus 1 okay now using the property of the dirac delta function i will get the spectral noise density for the quantum lens even noise would be m h cross gamma m cot hyperbolic h cross omega divided by 2 kbt plus 1 okay so this is what we obtain sometime back uh, we actually saw that if you have worked out 
that this cot hyperbolic h cross omega by 2 kbt i can write it in terms of the average number of phonon as 2 into n omega plus 1 and just to recall that n omega is nothing but the average number of phonon and it is given by 1 by e to the power h cross omega by kbt minus 1 so if you utilize it then you can show that this function is nothing but cot hyperbole h cross omega by 2 kbt is can be expressed in this form and using this we have the spectral noise density that would be in terms of the phonon number i have twice m h cross gamma m omega um, so this i got it uh, let me one minute so i think i missed something here here i have this term omega is also there because i have used the dirac delta function so that's how this omega term is coming and i will have here n of omega plus one okay so this is what we obtain for when omega is greater than zero on the other hand i can also work out what is the spectral noise density at minus omega and in that case it would be integration would be minus into plus infinity d tau the fourier transform of the correlator i have here and because it is omega is less than zero in this case so i have minus rather than plus i have minus i omega tau in this case i am having omega less than zero and please do this calculation very straightforward the the way we have done it you can show that you will get you will get twice m h cross gamma m omega now you are going to get n of omega not this plus sign would not plus one would not come so this is what you will get as xi xi at minus omega so it is clear that this spectral noise density in the quantum regime is not symmetric okay this is what the first thing we obtained in the uh, what is different from the classical regime so it is not symmetric this spectral noise density function is not symmetric okay uh, in the classical limit however in the classical limit in the classical limit you can show because you know that in the classical limit your s cross tends to zero and your this kbt is much much greater than s cross omega and in that case you can have uh, this average phonon number can be written as kbt divided by h cross omega and utilizing this you can show that the spectral noise density function in the classical limit would be uh, twice m gamma m kbt and if it is evaluated at minus omega this will also give you twice m gamma m kbt so in the classical domain this quantum this this is not uh, this spectral noise density function would be symmetric one thing we can do here if say temperature is very high if temperature is high but you are still in the quantum limit say but your s cross is not equal to zero then we can write very approximately we can write approximately and this is going to be useful later on approximately this spectral noise density function quantum noise density function as twice m gamma m h cross omega m now this n of omega is evaluated at the uh, mechanical frequency omega m plus one or the resonance frequency of the uh, mechanical system oscillator and as i at the frequency minus omega this would be twice m gamma m 
h cross omega m you will have n evaluated at omega m now let us come to our fabry pero cavity which is the main setup for cavity optomechanical system and let us see how the quantum noise affects an optical mode so we are going to study optical noise effects on an optomic optical mode this actually comes under the so called input output theory as well uh, you know uh, that the optical mode undergoes damping inside a fabry pero cavity and the electromagnetic fluctuation from vacuum outside the cavity inject quantum noise into the cavity and in the case of cavity optomechanics the cavity is often driven by a single mode laser having frequency say omega l we will consider this environmental effects for a single sided cavity as depicted uh, here in this schematic diagram where one of the mirror is perfectly reflecting say this one is perfectly reflecting while the other one is weakly transmittive we will uh, begin our analysis uh, with a hamiltonian with that i am now going to write in the heisenberg picture let me first write down the full hamiltonian h is equal to h cross omega optical a dagger a this is the hamiltonian uh, who is denotes the energy of the optical mode in the cavity where omega optical is the resonance cavity resonance frequency then we have another term that is summation over all the oscillators bath oscillators h cross omega i bi dagger bi so this term describe the energy of the bath oscillators in fact these are electromagnetic oscillators uh, we are this vacuum we are now modeling it is as a collection of independent harmonic oscillators and it surrounds this uh, optical cavity only with the constraint the that it has to has is that bi this commutation relation has to be uh, satisfied bi bi bz dagger should be equal to delta ij and then we will have another term that is it is now driven by a laser from outside so that is taken into account by h cross omega drive this is the driving amplitude and we have this term a dagger a photon is created inside the cavity and the laser frequency is omega l and it should be hermitian so therefore there is a term hermitian conjugate and many times um, this particular term is people write it in this form also say i h cross omega drive because here the drive amplitude is considered to be a real quantity but it may be a complex quantity because it has a phase part so people write it in this form also omega drive a dagger e to the power minus i omega lt minus omega star uh, this omega drive it's complex a e to the power i omega lt all right so this is another form and in fact it is the most general form and maybe let us consider this particular form rather than this one here we'll come to that and there would be another term that would be summation over all the oscill bath oscillators h cross omega i star uh, a b i dagger plus omega i a dagger b i so this particular term uh, actually refers to the fact that there is a coupling between the system and bath and the st strength of the coupling between the cavity mode and the ith bath oscillator mode is given by omega i so this is the usual coupling and uh, we will now going to analyze it but as i said let me rewrite the whole hamiltonian in this form and this is what we are going to analyze 
rather than writing omega opt so let me just put s cross omega zero here that is the optical res uh, cavity resonance frequency uh, h cross omega zero a dagger a plus summation h cross omega i b i dagger b i and then let me now take the general form here that is i h cross omega drive a dagger e to the power minus i omega lt minus omega drive star a e to the power i omega lt and finally we have summation h cross omega i so please don't get confused with omega terms here this is omega drive and this is the omega i omega i refers to the coupling between the optical cavity and the bath oscillator so what this particular term says that when a bath uh, a optical cavity is getting annihilated and this is getting uh, resulted in the creation of a bath mode or opposite process can also happen so this is basically is happening due to the coupling okay between this uh, bath oscillator mode and the optical mode so we are now going to analyze this uh, particular uh, hamiltonian and this is uh, will give us a lot of insight about what's going on as regard quantum noise effect uh, in an optical mode is concerned let me stop here for today in this lecture we discussed about the quantum langevin noise we have worked out the autocorrelation function for the quantum Langevin noise and also we saw that the quantum spectral noise density is not symmetric unlike the, its classical counterpart. And finally we started discussing on the effect of quantum noise on an optical mode in a Fabry-Perot cavity and we will continue this important, this very important discussion in the next class. So see you in the next class. Thank you.